um, Bible uh, s- stories, well, books in the Bible. We're going to be starting Esther in uh, two or three weeks' time at this church. But we just felt like because there were so many new people coming to church, we ought to really go back to our values because this is the kind of bedrock on which we're, we're building here. We believe we worked on these for some time. We believe these are what God asked us to, to implant in our church And as leaders, we come back to these uh, all the time in terms of where we're moving forward as a church. Um, Obviously, last week we looked at uh, the value of encountering God, or Nick did, and did it, and Nick did, Andy did rather, (laughs) did a great job. And this is always the first and foremost um, value, isn't it? You know, that we are founded upon the rock Christ Jesus. He is the chief foundation stone. Our, our meeting with him as Savior and Lord, our encounter with his presence by the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, knowing God as Father and how that brings a real identity to our lives of who we really are is very, very important to us. And in fact, the most important. And all these other three values really flow out of that. So if you haven't listened to Andy's talk, you can get Get hold of it online, and I suggest you do so, because that is where we start, uh, and it's where we finish, and it's where we centre everything, and you know, it's all about Jesus, that's the really important one. But uh, today we're going to be looking at um, this value of, uh, en- um, of getting involved. Um, now, we used to have a, a phrase we used at this church, I think it was, uh, I think it was Chris Simpson who, who put it forward first about being crew, not passengers here at the church, that we're more like a battleship as a, as a church rather than a luxury liner where people come along and, you know, um, get their needs met, as it were. Um, it, and it's an interesting fact that, that churches have always seemed to operate on a kind of 20%, 80% sort of thing, that 20% of the church do all the work. Uh, one, one-fifth of the church and four-fifths are kind of like just, you know, sort of like... Passengers, to some degree, that sounds a really strong word. I I don't quite mean it as derogatory as that. Um, In fact, there's been some recent research done on the church again in the developed world. And it has shown these figures to be be correct, that actually most churches are run, in terms of congregations, by 20% of those who attend. That's a fifth of those who attend. Uh, The others obviously sing, they, they come, they pray, they put money in the offering but they're not actually participating at the same level. And it led to the comment of one of the researchers who looked into this recent report that almost all churches are operating below their potential. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? I have to say, and I say this with a certain amount of, not personal pride, but pride in you, that MCF books the trend big time. And actually talking about this value to try to engage people who are already so very busy is, is a little bit of an embarrassment because this church is absolutely amazing. And I want to thank you so much over the last few weeks and months, your support of individuals, your support of, of things that are happening in our church is phenomenal. And there's lots of people who can have stories of when they are needing help that this church has stood up to the plate. And practically in ways that actually staggers people who are not inside this church. So if you can give yourself a big round of applause, I'm not asking you to do it, to, but please do. Because actually, honestly, this is amazing. We do book the trend. Um, and we're living into a value that we believe in. Getting involved. I think it helps, actually, that we, we believe in a, in a theology of, of um, not just the phrase priesthood of all believers, but that we believe that everyone as a body has something to contribute, something to offer, something to get involved with, something to give. Um, and all churches would say they sign up to that, but when you've got a churches that believe in a kind of clergy that do, can only do certain things and a laity that can only do certain things, I have to tell you that the church in this diocese, I know, or in this area, is really struggling in the established churches to try to get the workers for all the work that they want to do. And they're looking at how they can actually change things. Thankfully, we don't have some of those problems. Now, what do I mean by getting involved? Well, fundamentally, what I'm talking about today is not just involved in our church program, not just involved in what we do on Sundays, not just involved in what we're doing in the week. It's about us as a people of church being mobilized to active participation in the life and ministry of the wider church, or this church, and the Christian faith. See, the Christian faith is active. 
It's not passive. We're called by God to apply what we believe to our, not only to our personal lives, but also in our community and as a group of people. That's why we gather together. All the analogies in the New Testament are body, you know, army, sort of the idea of, of people gathering together with a purpose and a sense of mobilized to do something effective. This is, this is New Testament church. It's about everyone has something to give, as Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. Um, and, and let's be honest, you know, the Bible doesn't have anything positive to say about those people who talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. It's not just a good idea to try and get more people involved doing things in a church we're talking about. This is a God idea. This is what God wants for us as his people, to be involved in his purposes. The Bible has nothing positive to say about people who claim to believe, but neither obey the Bible nor put their faith into, into action by by you know, what they do and how they live. Um, the letter of James we've had quoted already today, but in, in James you have a whole theme of this going through the Bible, uh, going through the letter rather. Um, in James 1 verse 22, um, James writes, don't merely listen to the word of God and deceive yourselves. Do what it says, 2 verse 14. What good is it if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? 2 verse 26, faith without deeds is dead. James says, actually, we're foolish in that passage of Scripture if we don't grasp hold of that idea that our wisdom of, in God, our understanding of God, verse 3, verse 13, is demonstrated by the deeds we do in humility. I think these days in our country, there are, there are some real dangers for the church in general, the broader church, um, that may restrict our involvement in getting involved in what God wants us to do. Um, there are dangers that actually turn church members into an audience or spectators rather than participators in what God is doing. Um, the first one is that when all our efforts go into the Sunday service, research, research shows that many congregations or churches in our country put the majority of their energy, their work, their mobilization into putting on a Sunday service. Um, all their effort is put into this brief window on a Sunday morning or whatever. Um, but church is more than Sunday morning. It's about us. It's about our lives together. You know, we'll never change the world unless we engage with it and take our message out beyond our services. And whilst churches put all their effort into putting on the Sunday show, it becomes like a program I used to watch when I was a kid, black and white, Sunday night at the London Palladium. You know, you've got the singers and you've got the dancers and you've got the bright lights and you've got the, you know, almost the comedians sometimes at the front telling their jokes and telling their stories. And, you know, people are entertained and people think it's great and people think it's wonderful and they flock to that kind of thing sometimes. But, you know, it's almost like, like creating a them and us again. You know, the people on the platform, the band, the speaker, the, you know, the charismatic personalities are the ones who actually do the stuff and the rest do this. Say amen or say ouch. <laughs> you know, unless you're on the platform, you can't get involved. Um, and the danger is, and I'm pretty strong on this, that we can produce Christian voyeurs. We're watching the show. We're kind of like you know, entertained by it or stimulated by it, but actually, oh, can't wait to go again, you know? And yet we're not that engaged with the everyday sort of thing. Church is not about entertainment. It's not about trying to make you laugh or make you feel good. It's about being involved. The second thing, dare I say, is when churches almost put theory or theology before practice. You know, there are churches that actually preach sermon after exegetical sermon after exegetical sermon after exegetical sermon and you know people are full of knowledge of the bible it's interesting 1 corinthians 13 paul goes on to talk about um about people who can fathom all mysteries and have all knowledge but actually lack the practical outworking of love in their lives and says well they're nothing really they're nothing really um, there are churches full of people who learn more and more about the Bible and probably know far more about the Bible than I do, 
But whether they put it into practice in their everyday lives, it can be a challenge because there's less opportunity to participate and be involved in local mission than there is to learn things. Look, we need a Bible-based um, Christianity. And as a church here, we are unapologetic about <laughs> preaching, the, preaching the, through the Bible and preaching the Bible. It's very, very important that we do this. But fundamentally, if we do that without getting involved in the everyday stuff of life, there's a real disconnect that can happen, that we know the stuff, but we don't put it into practice. It's about learning the theory to drive, but never getting behind a wheel. It's that kind of stuff. Um, getting involved in God's mission. You know, Paul, as, as I say, uses an analogy of the church being like a body where every part works together and contributes for the good of every other part. And actually, you feel it if one part's not functioning properly. It affects the whole of the body. There is a need for every part. Getting involved in God's mission is vital to obey God's will for us as human beings. But I guess it's also important for us as individuals too. I know this from my own uh, story, which I'll tell in a little bit, that you know, if we don't get involved, we can soon feel at the edge of things, a bystander, on the fringe. Um, unless we participate in some way, we struggle to feel part of what's happening around us. We struggle to build relationships. We struggle to feel like we belong. And the less involved we become, the less connected we feel, the more sidelined we become. I had a real conversion experience at the age of 11 on this farm at Hollybush. It was a very powerful experience for me. I was, I was shaking and didn't understand why I was shaking. And, and I went forward to, 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 at a, a, an altar call. I was the only guy who went forward. It was quite a challenging thing for an 11-year-old boy to walk forward at the front of a church. Never done, been in a service like that before. And I really encountered Jesus as Savior and Lord. But for the first five years of my life, I was on my own. We lived 15 miles away from that church. My parents didn't go to that church. I had no way of going there. I was starting a new school. I was very much on my own. Uh, and, and actually, my whole spirituality kind of was, was suppressed to the point where I almost was denying it, really, by how I was living. At the age of 17, I, I um, through a series of <laughs> adventures, uh, which I won't go into, I ended up really coming back to God in that church at Hollybush. And I immediately got involved. And that involvement was costly in many ways for me. Um, but but it, it made a difference. It made a huge difference in my sense of connectedness with what God was doing. And, you know, we were part of a youth group that used to go out. I think within a, a week of, of actually becoming, coming back to God, I was up giving my testimony. I was in a singing group, singing, singing songs that I didn't particularly know very well. I was really contributing to what God was asking me to do. And I felt as though I belonged. Um, you know, uh, it, it, was, it was kind of very important. I've been a member of three churches since I became a Christian. Hollybush, this church in North Yorkshire. The Upper Room, where I worked for a year, which is the home church of Chrissy Perillo in the Philippines, who we support, and this church. And do you know, I've built lifelong friendships by my involvement and participation in all three churches. There are people I'm still in connection with in all of them. There are people I know, uh, and I've had great experiences because I was participating. When I was at Bible college, I had my first experience of church, which was really different. I'm not going to say uh, what church it was. It was a Baptist church, though. Not that there's anything wrong with Baptist churches, I might add. And it was on the edge of Watford. For a whole year, when I was in digs in Watford, I went every Sunday morning and every Sunday night, apart from if I was ill or I was away doing something on mission. So it was, just, it was very, very regular. It wasn't like one week on and then three weeks off. I had somebody shook my hands at the front, and if we said the peace to one another, people shook hands with me during the service. Uh, but essentially, the rest of the time, um, do you know what? I wasn't invited to anyone's house. Nobody came up and spoke to me. Um, I think the, the pastor spoke to me twice in a whole year. They knew I was there as a Bible a college student. And it was one of the most lonely places, as everyone busily was talking to each other and all the rest of it, but nobody, um, nobody talked to me. I had a recent experience with a well-known church stream, which we were looking to get involved with, which was all about, you know, values of partnership and relationship. 
and used to go regularly to their events and had a similar experience. I, I, do you know, is there something about me? Probably there is, but um, people not talking, people not engaging with me. And what do I take from this? Whilst it's really important to get involved, do you know, honestly, we as the church here have got a part to play to enable people to, to get involved in our church. How we treat people, how we welcome people, how we engage with people, how we help people. If we're always too busy or too preoccupied, this can be a very lonely place like I felt when I was uh, in those two situations. We have to be generous towards people coming to our church and give opportunity for people to participate because that way they will build relationship with us. Maybe befriend someone. Do what we can to encourage people to get involved. And I really want to say, across all the things we do, if somebody comes to you and says, can I help <laughs> wherever possible, and it's not always possible because of safeguarding and all the rest of it, I understand that, but wherever possible, the answer is yes. Yes. We want to help people to belong, to get involved. Today we have the story of Nehemiah, and uh, you know it's it's great how a building project, a practical project, can actually draw people together. But it's a great story in the Bible about people getting involved, about a whole communication, uh, a whole community rather, working together. You know they saw a need, and they got involved in trying to meet it. And again, that says something to me about actually how we get involved. That actually it's not just enough to have a value to say we believe that you know getting involved is what God wants us to be to be involved in his body to be involved in his kingdom to be involved in his church but actually what Nehemiah did was give a vision <laughs> he said look guys we need to get this done there's a there's a there's a reason for us to get involved here there's a mission for us to do we need to build up these walls this is the vision that we've got and actually, the value of getting involved tucks in behind that vision. So I, I think to me, you know, it, it's all right having a value, but actually, people need to know, why do I need to be involved? What, what, what is the value of that to me and, and, and the value to the church? And I think that, you know, we've got to present a vision of why, you know, why people need to get involved that's easily understood and that can, people can see the need for. Uh, value and vision goes together. The result was, as we heard read today, that in Nehemiah, the people got together and they got the job done in 52 days. Nehemiah 4 verse 6, the people worked with all their heart, not just their heads, not such their hands rather, but their heart. Their hearts were in it. Their hearts were in it. Um, they threw themselves into it, in other words. Look, it wasn't easy. It never is. The first hardship and challenge and opposition, you always do. But if you've got a vision and if you've got a value, <laughs> you will get involved even though it might cost you something. Together, they achieved something with God's help that would have been impossible for Nehemiah to do on his own or even with a 20% buy-in that we're talking about today. It needed the motivation and the mobilization of a church. But it took personal choice, an act of the will, and then teamwork, people working together. So here comes the challenge today. And I'm challenging a church that I'm fully aware of is very, very mobilized and committed and at work. So please forgive me. I'm not trying to get at you. I'm just stirring up a challenge. <laughs> I would like to suggest to you if you're like me and a human being, which I think you are, we can always find time for whatever we really want to do. We don't make excuses if we really want to do something. We create the opportunity and the time to make it happen. If it's really important to us, we'll drop something else if necessary. We will change our priorities around in order to get involved. Something else we'll give if this is really valuable to us. The thing about the kingdom of God is that Jesus had some really tough things to say to people who wanted to follow him. And it's challenging. 
he asked them, what's going to come first in your life? And when people came to him and said, well, I've got family issues to deal with. I've got my family to sort out. Oh, your family's here, Jesus. Jesus says, hold on. Priority number one is God's kingdom. People came about finance. You know, well, you know, no, no. Leave all that. Follow me. Businesses. Leave your business. Follow me. Challenging, isn't it? Horribly challenging. Really terribly challenging for all of us who love our kids and love our families and love our lives and love our businesses and love everything. It's not particularly easy, but please take it up with Jesus, not with me, uh, because it's not my fault that I'm telling you this. He challenged his followers as to their priorities. Seek first God's kingdom and everything else will be added to you. And it's pretty clear that some people couldn't hack what Jesus challenged them to do. So getting involved for us today here. Look, it's bigger, as I said, than working on this estate. It's bigger than fitting, filling roles in, in this church. There are lots to do here. And there's always jobs for all if you really want them, you know. And I'm not, but I'm not here to try and fill vacancies at MCF this morning. or make anyone feel guilty about what they do or don't do here. But I would want to say this to each one of us, that if you want to feel like you belong to be builded into this church, then getting involved is a good way of connecting. And to us as a church, we need to help people to connect by creating the opportunities for them to do so. Look, I know within our church, there's loads of people who are involved in other projects around the city or in the local area. Not just bit more John thought. Other people are involved in missions internationally and stuff like that. And look, we just, we just say thank you for that. Our, our calling is not just here. You know, we feel like we're an Antioch church called to do things beyond our boundaries. Look, we're not saying drop everything and just, just, just do something in the church. But we are saying this. You really feel part of this church? Then find a way of getting involved. The key thing is that each one of us has got to create the space and opportunity to get involved in what God is asking each of us to do. And dare I say this, based on my own experience anyway, you don't need to wait for a word from God before you get involved. There are people who spend their lives praying, well, God, what do you want me to do? Do you know what? Here's something for you. God has never spoken to me about coming and joining this church. Never. Not once. I haven't got a word from God. I can't point you to a scripture. I can't point you to anything that God has said to me about coming to Sheffield. You can decide whether you think it was a mistake. <laughs> um, I, but there's other things I've been involved with. Where God, you know, I, I, I sense God calling me to pastoral ministry soon after I became, came back to God at, at the age of 17. But I couldn't open the doors. Um, I sense God telling me about, you know... Um, well, somebody prophesied over me in a meeting that I would be involved in prison work. But again, you know, actually, I really can't open the doors of a prison, I promise. Anyone watching, never mind. You just have to wait your time until your time's up. Yeah, I, I, I can't, you know, I couldn't do that. But remarkably, God does open doors for us. But I'm saying this, that actually, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing here. Did I have a word from God about us getting involved in the library? No. Did I have a word from God about... Unit two, no. Did I have a word from God about this building? No. Doesn't it sound really unspiritual? I'm just trying to encourage you just to get on with it. <laughs> just get on with it. <laughs> because otherwise, you'll waste so much time worrying that you might get something wrong. Do you know, if you acknowledge God in all your ways, the Bible says he will direct your paths. Put him first. Seek his kingdom first. And these things will follow you. These things will come into place. God, as with Jesus, will inevitably challenge each one of us on how we live. Maybe even where we live. Challenge us as to our priorities. Challenge us as to what we do with our time and what we do with our money. Because he wants us to be involved in his purposes and his plans, which are often so much bigger than ours. Let's just say this as I'm coming nearer close. You know, there are some jobs that we know just have to be done by us all. It's the same at home. You know, 
you have to do the vacuuming, you have to do the washing up, you have to do the laundry. You know, it's not the greatest thing. You don't need a word to know that those things need doing. Lord, please tell me if I need to vacuum the carpets this week, you know. You actually just get on with it because you know it has to be done. Uh, essentially, uh, some of you are looking at each other thinking, oh, do we really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> There are such jobs in the church too. Um, you know, and, and actually there are things, bluntly, if we can get involved physically, that we, you know, we don't need, we just, just get on with it. They're not particularly exciting, but they are vital and such a blessing to the wider body of Christ. Um, you know, um, and there's this famous story, isn't there? I mean, we've all heard it before. A little story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. And there's an important job to be done. And everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. There you go. You've heard it all before. But essentially, you might think of yourself as a nobody or a somebody or an anybody here at this church, but you are part of the body, the body of Christ. We belong to one another. We support one another. We work together for the common good. We hurt when one party's hurting. We care. And one way of caring for one another is actually getting involved in some of the nitty-gritty stuff that you probably wouldn't ever want to sign up for. Conclusion, I believe that Jesus' words still sound true that the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. And guess what? I actually believe that is true and will continue to be true whatever happens for eternity, you know, until the Lord comes again. The mission, I believe, that God puts before us as his church is always a challenge to the resources of the church. It's always beyond us. It causes us to walk by faith. It causes us to say, we can't do this, God, but, you know, help us. We need you to help us get on with it. But he is Lord, and his will will be done here on earth. Look, if he's called you to be part of what we're doing here at MCF, however messy it looks and however confusing it might look to you, to be involved, you are being asked to be involved in something that is bigger than you, bigger than your, your gifts, bigger than your aspirations, bigger than what you can comprehend. But you are asked to pay your part and just give that little bit, like that boy giving that little meal that was able to feed five thousands. Maybe in this challenge to be involved in what God is doing, maybe consider tithing or giving not just money, but your time. For some of us, we're getting on a bit. I'm one of those, but there we are. We're not maybe as, as, as fit as we once were, and there's things we can't physically do. But we can all be involved, whether it's through prayer. Different ones of us could be involved in hospitality. We can be involved in mercy, even if just phoning somebody up and just, just caring for somebody. We can be involved in befriending people and enabling them to feel a part of what's happening. We can be involved in the practical mission support of what God is doing here in this city or around the world. Whatever, just get involved. Get involved for the benefit of the church. Get involved for the benefit of this world. And get involved for your own benefit too, because you will be blessed as you give. Thank you very much.